What's going on, guys? It is Bromley at Empire Barbell, and I'm taking you through an upper body workout. This is kind of a feeder workout I threw in. It's not very heavy. It's not super high volume. I do a couple sets of a lot of different exercises, and it's a way that I kind of keep myself well-rounded. So this is a bottoms-up kettlebell press. This is something I started doing to test my shoulder mobility um, and, and increase stability a little bit. Uh, at the start, I had a hard time getting my shoulder all the way up while keeping my ribs down. So stretching out my lats, getting a little extra rotation helped with that. And when you do it slowly, you really feel your shoulder, uh, all the muscles around the shoulder joint fight to keep you stable. So I like this as kind of a warm up, and it's helped improve shoulder stability quite a bit. So that's helped with some of the issues I've had, the tears and the scar tissue I'm sure I've gotten over the years. Now this is an external rotation. Adding a band to it has made it a little more challenging, which I kind of like. Uh, it's a way to make lighter weight work for you so you don't have to get super heavy. And uh, this is another one. Really focusing on external rotation has helped quite a bit with getting my shoulders healthy. And considering I just used to press as heavy as I could, as often as I could, that's gone a long way to keeping me in one piece as I get older. So we're doing seated military presses. I don't do a, a ton of pressing these days. Um, as I get ready for this big show that has a max axle press, I need a little bit of strict pressing volume to keep me uh, rounded out. So I don't just jerk or just push press, although those are my staples. I got this hammer strength rack and I was really excited to get it because... Um, I like doing seated presses and it's a pain to set it up in the rack. Uh, I'm really not pleased with how the back lines up with the, the pins in the back. You see that we had to adjust, we had to rebolt the, the back part in a little bit higher. It's really awkward to get out. So I take it out from the front. Um, so it's, it's convenient enough as it is. I throw the elbow sleeves on when, uh, my shoulder starts giving me shit. So over the years I've developed quite a few injuries specifically from being an idiot teenager lessons I've had to learn the hard way. And uh, most recently what I'm dealing with is bicep tendonitis up around the shoulder, which is easy to mistake for general shoulder pain. But it's bicep tendonitis specifically, which when you have to brace the bicep on strict pressing or bench pressing, uh, you can get some overuse issues there. And I've all but gotten rid of it by not benching or uh, really any benching whatsoever or strict pressing. I just started strict pressing recently. Um, and now I'm just trying to slowly get back into it. I'm mashing my bicep a lot. I'm working on mobility. I'm trying to make sure that these structures don't have to take on the load uh, that other structures should be picking up because when you develop imbalances and you get bound, that's what happens and that's how you get overuse issues. So make sure the load gets distributed evenly. Uh, I throw the elbow sleeves on when my shoulder starts to act up uh, because I'm also dealing with a labrum tear. I'm pretty sure it's a labrum tear and it's marked by instability so as I get to the transition spot about halfway up, my shoulder feels very unstable. Almost like if I go to push too hard, something's gonna roll out of socket. It's not painful, it's just something I'm mindful of. So that's when you see me really slow the reps down because I'm fighting for stability there. Thankfully, I don't get that on jerks or push presses, but I don't wanna let that weakness develop. I wanna take care of it, I wanna nip it in the bud. So I'm, I'm prioritizing things that force me to get stable right around that spot. And so far it's working pretty well. Um, so you'll see me slow down when that, I start to feel that, but I'm not trying to go heavy on my strict press. This is an excess, this is purely accessory. This is purely secondary movement to try and round me out. Uh, I'm just doing rep work. I'm not trying to go heavy because I don't want to make these issues worse. As long as I can set a baseline of volume and tick forward predictably and see improvements, then I'm going to see that carry over to my push press and my other strongman events. And that's all I'm interested in. Uh, especially as it comes to staying in one piece and making sure that I can perform. So that's why. So I use this uh, supportive gear. It's important to know not to mask issues, but if something makes me feel more comfortable and it allows me to get a certain amount of work in, this is not my main strength movement. So if I have to use a little bit of supportive gear, a little bit of compression to take stress off a problem area, I absolutely will. So the sleeves do, uh, do help give a little extra compression that takes some stress off my bicep tendon. So I kind of like that. So here I'm starting to feel my rep capacity come back. These feeder workouts are really just doing kind of a, a top set around like 65, 70%. And then I'll drop back and do some reps. And as my endurance goes up every week, I'm able to do a little bit more. I'm doing this workout once every seven to nine days. I just rotate it in as it's convenient. So I, I think at the beginning, I, I only did 175 for five. Uh, because uh, my shoulder was starting to get a little wonky and now I'm feeling a lot more stable. So I'm seeing those numbers come up pretty quick. So I don't do any benching for the problems I, I cited. 
So I had to do some horizontal pressing, a neutral grip incline turned out to feel pretty good on my shoulders and not really make my bicep tendons worse. So I included these as a way to get some type of chest pressing, uh, if for no other reason than to keep my pecs alive for things like sandbag picks and stone loading. I actually really like this movement because I feel my triceps engage a lot. And I'll talk a little later about the problems I've had getting my triceps to grow. With this neutral grip, I just kind of uh, feel like I'm pressing up and then flossing my elbows through. I feel like I'm just focused on getting those elbows pushed through to lock out the way you push your hips through on a deadlift. And especially with the high reps, I'm just doing a couple sets of 20 to get a pump and get some blood flow going. But I feel my triceps pump up quite a bit from this. So I like this. So this is pretty light, 75 for 20s. I'm going to taper this up. I might get to the hundreds by the end, but I'm not that worried about getting the weight uh, to go up. Now, dips are one of my favorite upper body developers, especially on paper. But I used to go really heavy. I used to do the the 200 pound weighted dips for reps and really sink it. And as my shoulders have gone, I've found that I just get the most bang for my buck. Uh, keep in the top end. I don't worry about sinking it. And I use band assistance. I could do plenty of reps without the band, but the extra help at the bottom, again, where my shoulder's really vulnerable at the bottom, that's where the tendon inflammation really starts to aggravate me. So by using a band, I can bypass that. I superset these with single arm uh, pull downs. Um, I like these for upper back, um, just because I can get a good stretch in the lats right here. I thought I was going down or sorry. I thought I was stretching at the top quite a bit more. So I watched this video and I realized how short I was cutting the full extension at the top. Part of it's because I'm pretty close to the top of the tower as it is. But, um, you know, I got short little arms. I'm stuck. I'm kind of bound through my lats. So I made sure on the next set to really emphasize getting my uh, getting my shoulder joint all the way active, all the way opened up, getting a better stretch. Um, and this is really all the love that my biceps get because aside from strongman events, I don't really do a lot of direct bicep work, specifically because I tore my biceps uh, tore my bicep a few years back on a really heavy tire flip, which is why I don't tire flip anymore. So. I'm experimenting with some angles right here. This angle didn't look as good as I thought it would, um, but I'm just pushing through it. Short range of motion. I'm squeezing hard at the top. I'm cycling through quick. I'm just doing sets of 20. I'll take band tension away slowly until I'm using body weight, but that range of motion feels good on my shoulders and I'm getting the right result. And that's really all that's important with accessory. You know, I want minimal wear and tear and I want, uh, I want to feel the tension where I'm trying to put it. I mean, this is makeshift bodybuilding. So this angle, man, this angle is really friendly. This is, uh, I'm trying to get all the tips and tricks of all the Instagram thoughts because I didn't realize how much camera angles make a difference. Uh, and this is probably uh, the best angle I've got so far. Man, I look, I look jacked right here. My arms have always kind of lagged behind. This is something you can see with my build. Um, my lats and shoulders were always the things that grew the fastest and I have kind of short arms. So given that I never did a lot of direct arm work, they were always smaller than everything else. And just aesthetically, it, it looks kind of silly. So lately I've been putting a lot more effort into my arms if for no other reason that people can look at me and, and tell that I lift weights, but it's actually helped a lot with the compound movements. It's really important to make sure you're well-rounded and that you don't let these weaknesses grow. And if all you do are the basic compound movements, I can be sure that that will happen. So T-bar rows, chest supported. I like these because it takes stress off my lower back and you can get some weight. Same thing, not going too heavy, just ripping through some quick reps. The higher rep ranges, I'm doing 12s here. You fatigue pretty quickly. Uh, so I just move quick, get the high reps in and every week I just add a little bit of weight. And if I feel good, I chase a few more reps. Uh, this is another failed angle. I don't know. I, I thought uh, this would be a little more muscular development. And uh, I look kind of like a potato right here. But that's okay. Uh, I'm new to these camera angles. I promise production quality will improve as we do more of these. Uh, another one that's been really friendly is uh, dumbbell skull crushers. Uh, again, the neutral grip has been huge. I used to do barbell skull crushers and I was really stubborn with them. And I found a couple things. They hurt the hell out of my elbows and my shoulders would do some wonky things when the weight got heavy. So I could never really push the weight here. What I found is that by using the neutral grip in a skull crusher, I can get a good stretch. My elbows feel great. And I can actually take it to the point of fatigue where at the top, I kind of focus on like, I'm trying to again, floss my elbow through, like I'm trying to lock out a press and I could actually go a little bit harder. Uh, I'll get up to about 70 pound dumbbells on my heavier days. 
for you know six to eight reps and that's when i'm doing my heavy push presses so on this feeder day i'll keep it 30 to 40 pounds and just clock set to 20. Uh, the the high level of fatigue has helped me really feel my triceps which i've had a real hard time getting to grow in the past for my shoulder issues and my elbow issues so finding a good tricep builder has been really huge here and uh, i like the activation i like feeling them work because again my short arms it feels as if the muscles around my shoulder joint have always kind of dominated my delts and my pecs have always dominated so getting my triceps to grow I've, I've seen this huge increase in my pressing strength and stability so it doesn't take much exercise selection is key here so now i'm going into the blood flow restriction now i just put up a video where i use this for rehab for my knees i like it on arm development again because i have such a hard time feeling those muscles uh, when they start to fatigue so this makes it really easy i don't have to go heavy i just do an isolation movement i clock off a lot of reps and i get about 15 to 20 in and things are burning i'm feeling the right areas build up fatigue and also because of the blood flow restriction i get to a level of fatigue that will trigger growth without having to use a load that is going to bother my shoulders or elbows uh, or that even really requires a lot of tricep muscle tear down so the idea is that because you hit that level of fatigue and trigger that growth response faster, you don't need as much actual work and don't need as much tear down. So right here, man, I started to feel my uh, my fingers go dead. Like when you fall asleep on your hand, and that's not quite what I was going for. So I actually panicked a little bit because I thought if I lost control of my fingers, I would be able to get them off and I'd be stuck inside the gym with no way to get out. So I was supposed to leave them on. Usually I'll do three rounds of about 30 reps or so, and I'll take 30 seconds to a minute and I'll have them on the entire time. And by the last set, it gets it gets kind of nasty. You feel like a trapped animal, um, but they they've worked really well. Uh, again, as far as keeping me in one piece, keeping wear and tear low, but also getting focused fatigue and focused stress on the muscle that I'm going for. So, again, exercise selection is huge. Getting creative, working around issues you have. There are a million ways to get growth in the areas you need without just beating yourself to a pulp. I used to be a huge purist when it came to just doing compound movements. You know, 80-20 rule, most bang for your buck, all that. And while that's true, there are limitations. If all you do are a few compound movements, you will develop weaknesses. And then when you get to the point where you can't handle load for whatever reason, injuries or overuse issues, uh, you also find that it's, it's damn near impossible to grow without using supplementary exercises. So I recommend everybody have some type of bodybuilding base. You don't have to go balls out. It's not that hard. Just set a baseline of work, progress forward over time, keep track, find little wins here and there. And over a long period of time, you'll find that they really do add quite a bit uh, to the rest of your training. So that was just my quick upper body feeder work. Uh, I'll get a heavier press session recorded and get that up to you guys so you can see what that looks like. And I'll go over my progression there. Uh, this is me just accumulating more fatigue, milking, milking this for all it's worth. Uh, and enjoying the pump that I have because I usually don't look like this. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave your questions and comments. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.